if there's an infection in the brain, the numbers of microglial cells increase and they start to try and deal with that infection. So that's microglial cells. In terms of what they look like, uh, they don't look like what you might be used to seeing as a white blood cell is this round, large cell with a nucleus that floats around in the bloodstream. Um, they do have a nucleus, but they have these, these almost tendrils coming away from the cell body. And they're thinner than I've been able to produce them here. And those tendrils can go out and engage in phagocytosis. So that's microglial cells. Um, the astrocytes. Astrocytes connect to neurons and to blood vessels. <laughs> My handwriting is getting bad. Bad enough to begin with. So they connect to neurons and to blood vessels. They literally physically support. So physical support. For neurons. And they are very important for the blood brain. Blood brain barrier or BBB. The astrocytes, in the way that they connect to the blood vessels, they make up part of that blood brain barrier. The blood brain barrier is a barrier literally between the blood that is in those blood vessels and the tissues of the CNS. It's important because there are some things that can travel in the bloodstream, certain proteins, antibodies, um, types of white blood cells, that you do not want to get into the CNS. If they get into the CNS, they can cause problems. I'll give you one example. Um, there's a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier in multiple sclerosis, and it allows white blood cells from the bloodstream to get into the brain. And those white blood cells can then attack the myelin. And that's how you end up with the disease of multiple sclerosis. Uh, the mechanism's not quite ironed out as far as how the blood-brain barrier gets disturbed, but it gets disturbed. The astrocytes, because they help contribute to this blood-brain barrier, they help to control the chemical environment of the brain. There's also some evidence that um, this connection between the bloodstream the blood vessels and the neurons, the astrocytes may directly pick up substances from the bloodstream and deliver them through the astrocyte to the neuron. That's another possibility and there's some evidence for it. So that's astrocytes in a nutshell. And that completes the supporting cells of the central nervous system. So I'm going to come up here and modify this supporting cells of from the CNS I'm going to put PNS peripheral nervous system and there's two major supporting cells of the peripheral nervous system they are the Schwann cells and the Schwann cells make myelin in the PNS. And recall, if this line represents an axon, 
Here's my myelin for the PNS. And unlike with the oligodendrocytes, each one of these Schwann cells, the nucleus, is here with the cell, and the entire cell is wrapped around the axon. Again, that's myelin in the peripheral nervous system made by Schwann cells. In the central nervous system, the myelin is made by the oligodendrocytes. The next cell of the PNS are satellite cells. Satellite cells. And what they do is surround and protect neuron cell bodies inside of ganglia. I don't recall describing what a ganglia is, so let's go through that real quick. Um, if you recall, if I have one axon, that's considered a neuronal fiber. If I have lots of axons, that's considered a nerve. So one of these lines is representing an axon. Lots of them are representing a nerve. I'm going to draw a larger nerve now. And along this nerve, I have a bulge. Here come some of the axons for this nerve and a cell body. Another axon, another cell body, another axon, another cell body. Axon, cell body. Axon, cell body. This is what's going on in a ganglia. A ganglia is a bulge along a nerve. And inside of that bulge are cell bodies. So a ganglion is a bulge along a nerve containing neuronal cell bodies or neuron cell bodies. There's all those cell bodies. And the satellite cells are here My picture, by the way, is way out of whack in terms of how big these things are. They're small, but in order for you to be able to see it on the video, I kind of have to draw them ridiculously huge. And I'll just do it on these two cell bodies. These are satellite cells surrounding the cell bodies inside of that ganglia. So the red cells here are satellite cells. So that's satellite cells. And those are the only two supporting cells that you need to know for the peripheral nervous system. The Schwann cells, which make myelin, and then the satellite cells, which surround the cell bodies inside of ganglia. And now you also know what a, you also know what a ganglia is, and you know what a nerve is. As always, any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you again for watching.